Thank you very much, John, and welcome everybody to Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois, where it is winter outside. Today, LSU takes on the Fighting Illini of Illinois. And happy holidays, everybody. Along with Cheryl Miller, I'm Roger Twibell. These are two teams in transition because both teams, Cheryl, lost a lot of players from last year. Illinois, six key players, LSU four. But the player LSU didn't lose was the big man, Shaquille O'Neal. Well, Shaquille O'Neal is only 18 years old, and he could be the best center in the country. He is a powerful force down low. He's averaging around 29 points per game. He's 7'1", 295. He can run the floor very well. And as a shot blocker, Roger, he's very intense. Meanwhile, Illinois got off to a slow start this year. They have played much better of late, and especially their second half in their win over Missouri, where Deion Thomas really came on strong. Well, both Andy Kaufman and Deion Thomas played very well against Missouri. Kaufman had 33 points, and Deion Thomas had 23. Kaufman is a three-point specialist for Illinois, and in order for the team to be successful, he has to stick the three-pointer and stick it early in order to open up the middle for Mr. Deion Thomas to go to work. Both of these coaches are concerned with their guard play, and that could be a crucial factor in the game today. Look for both teams to pressure one another's guards as you take a look at the starting lineup. Singleton, Griggs, O'Neal, Pugh, and Hanson for LSU. Thomas, Kaufman, that's Andy Petty, Smith, and Clemens for the fighting Illini of Illinois. Illinois 8-3 and three on the year. LSU at 6-1 and one, and we're set for the opening tip. Today's officials, Ted Hillary, Verl Sell, and Randy Drury. Roger, as you mentioned at the top about the guard situation, if you were to talk to Coach Brown, he would say that, that their, uh, their guards are very shaky. And if you were to talk to Lou Henson, he'd say that his guards are very shaky. So whoever gets out and pressures is probably going to be the winner of today's game. LSU will bring it up. T.J. Pugh, junior college transfers number 20. Hanson is 11. Inside to O'Neal, baseline jumper in and out. Knocked around, and Illinois will come up with it. Smith, 23. He's a senior. He's the real veteran on this team. Andy Petty, not much of an offensive threat. And O'Neal got a piece of that, knocked it loose. And here comes Griggs to Singleton and two. Cornell Singleton had a big game, Cheryl, against Loyola the other night. One of the keys for, for LSU is to get Singleton in the offense. He's a very big scorer. His freshman year, he was playing down low, and he's finally in the position that he wants to be in. Kaufman out top. He's the outside threat. The baseline move by Rennie Clemens. And how many blocks are we going to see from Shaquille O'Neal today? Well, they've got the dunkel meter ready for LSU because Shaquille O'Neal is so strong. He's very mobile as a big man down low. And Clemens had no business being down there trying to get that shot off. That's Kaufman. Likes to work outside. Petty, the jump hook. Won't go. Bounced around. Illinois has got a Smith underneath and in. In the beginning of the season, Larry Smith was one of the top rebounders for Coach Henson's team. He thought it might be a problem, but Petty and Kaufman have come along in the, in the uh, rebounding department. We're tied at two. That's Hanson. He's a three-point shooter. Pugh is number 20. O'Neal, once again on the baseline, triple team down there. Knocked loose. Still battling around, and Hanson will pick it up outside. Now back to Pugh. Roger, that's one of the keys for Illinois. They wanted to force Shaquille to take the bad shot. They're not going to play in front of them for the fear of a lob and the slam dunk. If they can, that's the, the you can't stop Shaquille O'Neal, but you can contain him. Force him to make bad shots or force the ball back out to the wing. Rennie Clemens in the lane and hits the jumper. Clemens averaging just 6.8 points per game. Hanson underneath. Andy Petty with the rebound. LSU wanted basket interference. And here comes Clemens, the penetration. That was pinned against the glass by O'Neal. Pugh to the other end. Hanson to pull up hop from the side, in and out. And this is a very fast-paced game. I think LSU thinks they're still playing Loyola Marymount. And an air ball by Kaufman. Is that unusual? That's very unusual, especially as well as he's been playing so far. Andy Kaufman. That's Andy Petty blocked, and that's three blocks by O'Neal, but Kaufman is there to put it in. Illinois is going to need a very big game out of Andy Kaufman. He's been scoring a lot of points for them. He's their offensive machine. O'Neal's averaging about four block shots a game, and he's got three already. And the whistle and the foul inside. Andy Petty commits a foul. There's Dale Brown, who's 
been 19 years at Louisiana State University, and on the other side of the coin, the head coach, Lou Henson, has been there 16 years. As Andy Petty comes out right now for the Fighting Illini, and Scott Pierce, young man out of Bedford, Texas, will check into the game. They really like uh, Pierce because they say he plays excellent post-defense, and it's going to be tough because he's going against 7-1, 295. And the foul and count it. No offensive foul. Offensive foul as Smith no took the charge. And the foul against Vernell Singleton. That's his first. 17-09 to go. First half from Assembly Hall. And I'll tell you one thing. As Pierce gets hit in the back of the head with the pass, and here comes Griggs to the other end. Roger, that's one thing about Griggs. He is a thief. He can steal the ball. Anytime there's a loose ball, I guarantee you Griggs will come up with a steal and the slam as you just saw. Griggs is averaging five steals a game. Good defense right there, and it's knocked off Kaufman. It'll be LSU basketball. Third turnover now for the fighting Illini as number 50 will check back in. Andy Petty comes in, and 24 Scott Pierce, the freshman from Euless, Texas, will sit down. Well, Coach Henson right now wants his team to take better care of the ball. They've been turning the ball over an average of 18 turnovers per game, but only forcing their opponents to 15. LSU three out of eight from the floor. Pugh back on top to Hanson. The leaner in the lane, he's got it. Hanson is a good outside shooter, and if you don't know the story about him traveling and it's turned over once again by Illinois, Hanson's a transfer from Tennessee Martin. He's from Spain. And he scored 41 points against LSU in a game a couple of years ago. Consequently, ended up transferring to LSU. And uh, he is one of the starting guards right now for Dale Brown. He's really a nice uh, addition, especially with Chris Jackson gone now. He has really helped in the offensive department. O'Neal, the baseline shot, and that's it. He's got that all day. 29.6 points, 15.3 rebounds, and over four block shots a game for the 18-year-old sophomore from San Antonio, Texas. Petty loses it. Hanson all alone. And again. And Mike Hanson. Hanson now with his second hoop. And it's 12-6. LSU with the lead, and it's been directly off the turnovers committed by Illinois. A lot of times, people don't understand, when you're 7-1, you're going to block a lot of shots, but you're also going to alter a lot of shots, and that's what Shaquille does so effectively. Singleton, three on two break. Oh. And that is going to be called goaltending. And count it. Give it to Hanson. And for Hanson, his third hoop. And we got a timeout, 15.34 to go first half, and LSU has run off eight straight. To Assembly Hall, Roger Twibell, Cheryl Miller here with you as Scott Pierce has checked back into the game for Illinois. Andy Petty has sat down. Cheryl, all the points have been in the paint so far, and Kaufman hasn't been a factor from outside yet. Well, really, you have to attribute the defense of LSU. They are not going to let the ball get in the hands of Andy Kaufman because they know that's where they can be hurt. Inside now, Thomas, he's triple teamed. He gets it up, but he is fouled. And let's see who it's going to be on. It's going to be on number 20. That is T.J. Pugh. You know, one of the things that Illinois can do early is try to get the ball down low and create some things for Deion Thomas. He's so he's a very quick lever. He's very quick down low. And once that gets going, they're game down in the inside. They can kick the ball out and hopefully get Kaufman in the offense. Andy Petty will check back in and Pierce will sit down. Thomas is a 68% free throw shooter. He is a prop 48, so didn't play at all last year. Has been slow to come around this year. Lou Henson would like to see him improve his upper body strength, but as we mentioned, had a terrific second half against Missouri in that victory in St. Louis the other night. As he played against Doug Smith. And played well, I might add. Absolutely. Second turnover against LSU. You see a little full court pressure. Inside, Smith misses it, tried to go over O'Neal. Singleton tips it around, and Kaufman comes up with a loose ball. Kaufman got caught in the air with it. Thomas lays it in. 
Quickly now, Hanson at the other end. Easy. What about Illinois defensively as Hanson takes it from outside and misses it short? Well, defensively down low against O'Neal, they're going to play either in back or half defense. But the two things that they have to do is get a lot of pressure out in the wing position and not let Shaquille O'Neal come down and set up on the blocks. Push him out. That was Smith who took it in, his second hoop. And it's 14 to 11 now as Illinois has scored five straight after that timeout. O'Neal dishes to Singleton, and what a nice little pass that was. That was a good look by Shaquille O'Neal. He's starting to see the floor a lot better, you know, and then they're having a little trouble right now with that full court pressure. Smith calls timeout. Full court pressure. Lou Henson upset at that timeout called by Illinois with 14.06 to go. LSU leads it by five. Shaquille has really improved on his passing game. You should see him calling for the ball down low. He'll turn in the middle of the paint, and you see he'll draw two defenders. Singleton coming down for the pass, goes up, and scores a basket. He is, his passing has improved tremendously. Shaquille averaging just two assists so far in the year, so that was one of the two. We'll see if he gets a few more today. Smith, Might have a game high. Kaufman threw an air ball up the first time, and he is really being harassed defensively by Singleton as Thomas has it inside. Good pump fake, and count it. Deion Thomas now with five points, the foul on Shaquille O'Neal. And that's one of the things Lou Henson was hoping for, Cheryl, is try to get Thomas working down low and get O'Neal in foul trouble. Even though there's a big size difference, you see how active Deion Thomas is, and he's going to fake once, twice, get him up in the air, and then score the basket. Misses the free throw, and Hanson will come away with it. 16-13, so after LSU scored eight straight points, Illinois now has come back with seven straight of their own. And O'Neal, now that's a wide pass to the other side. Pugh looking around. D.J. Pugh, a transfer from Garden City, Kansas Community College. The baseline move won't go. And finally, Deion Thomas comes away with it. Thomas had 23 points and eight rebounds against Missouri in that victory in St. Louis. From Simeon High School in Chicago, one of the most highly recruited players two years ago. A good overplay on the defense there by Griggs against Kaufman, who loses it, takes it in on the glass and hits. Andy Kaufman averaging 25 points a game. He's had a couple of 40 plus point efforts so far this year. And today he's really going to have to work hard because Sean Griggs is all over him. Pugh missed the three-pointer. O'Neal, ooh, goodness, hit the deck as he tried to get cute. And Andy Petty has the loose ball. And this is exactly what Illinois wants to do. Force Shaquille to take a bad shot or pass the ball out. Thomas blocked. Thomas had it thrown back by Singleton. And at the other end, what a great play. The great defensive play. And he comes to the other end, and Singleton has six. Kaufman will take it inside against O'Neal and count it. Second foul on Shaquille O'Neal. That was a good play by Andy Kaufman to drive the basket and try to get the foul on Shaquille O'Neal, in which he did. You see Kaufman as he goes down, Shaquille is not quite set. And you know that's kind of a tough foul for Shaquille. And I'm going to tell you why that's a tough foul for Shaquille, because he's really trying, Roger, to play the solid defense. He comes over to try to get the charge. He was just a little step slow in getting there, and he got called for the foul. A couple of substitutions now. O'Neal will go out, and the Dutchman, Kurt Hamming, will come into the game for LSU. And also Danny Moskovitz has checked into the game, number 25 at a guard spot. As Kaufman, a junior... Average just nine points a game last year, but with the big turnover, the personnel by Illinois has gotten his chance this year, and he's tied it up at 18. Fourth tie of the game. And right now, Roger, Illinois couldn't be any happier. They have Shaquille O'Neal on the bench, and they're starting to warm Sean him up physically as a team. Sean Griggs with his second hoop, 2018. LSU leads it. 11.42 to go. First half, Kaufman inside to Andy Petty. And the Nigerian out of Kanakee, Illinois Junior College, gets his first two. Petty hasn't been playing long as far as basketball and basketball terms, so if they can get any type of scoring from him, it's a bonus. 
Hammock had some good, valuable points against Arizona in that LSU victory in Baton Rouge. Misses there. And Smith, the three-year letterman to Thomas on the baseline, and it's going to be a traveling violation. I want to remind you, coming up next at uh, 4 Eastern, about five minutes from now, the duel in the desert continues, top-ranked UNLV against Florida State University. And, of course, some of you will be seeing that game, and the rest of you will be staying right here with Sharon, myself at Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois. Loose ball finally picked up by Vernell Singleton to Griggs. Oh, what a block by Deion Thomas. Roger, he is so quick off the floor. Send it back, Cheryl. You see Grace coming up. He knows he's about to slam the ball and comes over. Deion Thomas with the quick block. He had a sensational block in the Missouri game right. against, against Doug Smith. Well, you can just see his confidence in the second half of that game reach a new level. As T.J. Pugh has checked into the game, O'Neal is also back in. And checking in also for Illinois right now is number 32, Tom Michael, 6'8", redshirt freshman from Carlisle, Illinois. Number two on the Andy Petty now has committed his second foul, and Scott Pierce, young man from Texas, just uh, Pierce and Petty, the only two non-Illinois players on this Fighting Illini team. Now, Pierce matched up against O'Neal. Will they go right inside? You better believe it. Baseline, got it. Anytime you have a 6'8 player guarding Shaquille at 7'1, that's a mismatch in any court. Wonder if there'll be a fatigue factor, Shell. Third game in five days for LSU had Loyola Marymount the other night in their usual run and gun slugfest. As Kaufman off the glass and he's got that spin move down to perfection. And that's one of the biggest additions of his game. He could always stand down and shoot the three-pointer and shoot the outside shot. But now that he can dribble penetrate, it has really made his game very effective. Hanson missed the three-pointer. Kaufman with the rebound. And it's tied at 22. Illinois looking to take the lead on this possession with 10-12 to go. First half. Smith down the lane, beat Hanson, but O'Neal, the rejection. Kaufman misses from outside, and O'Neal gets it back. It's a five on one. Good play by Michael. And the foul, and what a defensive effort right there. Tom Michael. Now, Roger, look at this block. As you see Larry Smith going in, Shaquille's coming over, times it perfectly, gets it up at the apex, and almost knocked it out of bounds. Look at that shot. He's perfect timing. Perfect timing. Almost block. Cradled, yeah. it. cradled the ball. you got to have a lot of nerve to take it inside against that guy, huh? <laughs> or no conscience whatsoever. Foul was on Hanson. from outside yet. All of his points have come from inside. Boudreau has checked into the game for LSU. He's number 32. He shoots it from the corner and air ball. And it's out of bounds. And for a moment, Pierce and O'Neal started to hook up with it. They call the technical. So O'Neal is going to sit down right now. Just a technical, Just a no technical, personal. No personal foul. And Kaufman will shoot it. 85% from the free throw line for Andy Kaufman. That's the best on the Illini squad. And here it is. Watch Pierce and see the elbow that right there. Good, that was a good call. That was a very good call by the official. And Kaufman. Sometimes, you, you know, when you're that young, you get caught up in the game, and, uh, you know, there's no place for it in the game, but it was a good call by the official. 23-22. Illinois leads LSU. A lot of defensive pressure inside. Kaufman can't get the outside shot. Follows his miss. And traveling's call. And O'Neal will check back into the game. Shaquille O'Neal, replacing 43. 
O'Neal with the two personal fouls. And that's been a problem for him as a young man, as a freshman last year at age 17. It's gotten a little bit better this year, but that's an area he's really trying to work on. As Singleton puts it up outside, Michael keeps it alive. And finally comes back to Hanson, the good no-look pass to Boudreaux. Thomas got a piece of it. You know, Thomas is only 6'9", but he's so quick right off the Yeah. Good pass. Good pass by Pew down to Shaquille O'Neal. Eight points now for Shaquille O'Neal. 7-2, 285-18-year-old sophomore from San Antonio. Cross-court pass, and Cheryl, you know you're not supposed to do that. Anytime you do that, that's a no-no. The coach looking at you, or looks at you and is ready to, to yank you out of the game anytime you make a pass like that. Eight turnover for Illinois. And the whistle away from the ball, fouls on Pierce. So those of you expecting to see the duel in the desert, UNLV in Florida State, let's go to John Saunders in New York. John? And welcome back to Assembly Hall. Lou Henson, the head coach, 16th year here at Illinois. Foul was on Pierce. First foul on Pierce says Rennie Clemens is checked back into the game for Illinois and also in for LSU right now. 21 Rain Sims. Roger, right now, Scott Pierce has done the best job defensively against Shaquille O'Neal. He is not going to let Shaquille get down on the blocks and settle himself. He's pushing him out. Good defensive job by Pierce. Make that Lindir Burns who's checked into the game. Also along with Sims. Clemens to Michael in the corner. Just over eight minutes to go. First half. Thomas. Long move. Deion Thomas. He's got seven, and it's 25-24 Illinois. And we have got a timeout, and D.I. Thomas has started to show his stuff. We'll be back to Champaign after this. Let's look at the great defensive job that Scott Pierce for Illinois is doing, number 24 on Shaquille O'Neal. First of all, he picked him up at the free throw line. He is not going to let him get set. He's bumping him, bumping him and he gets caught right there. The only thing is that was a great defensive job is that Shaquille was able to spin move and the good pass by Pugh at the top of the key. Illinois leads it by one. O'Neal misses it, and Scott Michael comes down with the rebound. Rennie Clemens on the wing. And who hits it from outside? Scott Pierce. His first hoop. And it's a three-point Illinois lead, their biggest lead. Sims is in there, 44, along with Boudreaux, 32. Hanson's 11, Burns is 21, and the steal, and it's going to stay with LSU. I think that defensively that was a very good move by Coach Henson to put Pierce on O'Neal because he's much quicker than Petty. You see, Pierce, he's a lot more active than Petty as he gets around on Shaquille and knocks the ball out. The ball is out to, uh, to LSU. Hammock is checked in now, and O'Neal will sit down with 7-11 to go. Sims, the three-pointer, won't go, and it'll go over to Illinois. Well, I think Lou Henson's got to be happy with the way his team's played so far in this first half, coming off a good victory over Missouri and really playing especially strong in the second half. Seemed to have a lot more confidence than O'Neal with two fouls right now. And Shaquille with eight points and four blocked shots sitting on the bench. You know, minus the early turnovers, uh, Illinois has played extremely well. Foul's going to be on Lendeer Burns. Now, the weather here is no bargain right now. And how did LSU get here? Well, after playing Lola Marymount, the chartered plane got diverted to Terre Haute because they were fogged in in Champaign. A two-hour wait for the bus, a two-hour ride to Champaign. No practice yesterday. The result of a seven-hour trip. As Deion Thomas has just hit again, and he's got nine. And it's 29-24. Thomas is at four of five from the floor. Boudreaux, the leaner in here. Boudreaux so quick Harold off the drill that time got his defender up in the air and was able to slither down the baseline. Boudreaux is a 6'9 junior. They've got good size, LSU. Hammond goes 7-1. Boudreaux 6'9. Illinois lucky to get it back. Kaufman underneath, and he's fouled. So Kaufman hasn't found the range outside, so he's taking it inside a little bit more. 
But I'll tell you, Roger, what makes him such a good offensive player is that he knows that his shot from long distance is in. So what is he doing? He's driving to the basket, trying to create some different things, and now he's at the free throw line. Foul is on Sims as Kaufman goes to the line. He is four of ten from field goal range, and he's three of four at the free throw line. He has not hit a three-pointer yet today, and that's been one of his strong suits. What do you have, seven the other night against Missouri? Yeah, seven. Yeah. He gets both the free throws, and it's 31-26. Illinois leads LSU. Hammock inside, a fake, might have been a step, but Deion Thomas gets the rebound. Kaufman will take the middle. Clemens on the wing, spins around hands, appears to follow it in. Boy, a good job so far by the freshman Scott Pierce out of Euless, Texas. 33-26, Sims won't go. Sims gets it back to Boudreaux. Kinson said he only likes uh, Pierce to get in there and provide some good defensive stability, but he's also provided some offense for him also as well. Sims inside and fouled by Pierce. So Scott Pierce, 6'8", they say he weighs 195, I'm going to doubt that, <laughs> has been very aggressive and active. As a couple of substitutions, Griggs and Pugh check back in for LSU. I don't care whether, you know, what team, whether you're a pro team, a college, or high school, when you play three games in five days, and you got to go all through that travel, it's got to have some sort of effect yeah, on Roger, the Dale Brown was trying to sit up there and say, well, it's just part of the part of the game, but you can believe me, as a player, that can help, with, you know, tap into your stamina. So Sims at the line right now, 71% free throw shooter. Wayne Sims the boy. And that was just the first two LSU free throws. Illinois has been to the line. They're five out of eight. As Vernell Singleton checks in. And Sims will sit down over on the bench. 33-27 with 5.27 to go first half. Clemens. And Hammond comes up with a loose ball. Briggs is by himself for the moment, and a good recovery. That was a great athletic John move Griggs. right there by Sean Griggs. 